The women's soccer team had one final non-conference tune-up before beginning Big East play next week, and they had to be happy with the results, winning 3-0 Sunday evening against UMass on Chappie Field at Anderson Stadium. And with that shutout, Chris and Shea tied a program record with their 19th career shutout. Coach Sam Lopes said after the game, it's just a product of all the work that she's put in. Yeah, I think Kay Shea is quite frankly, I think one of the better goalkeepers around. Um, the thing that I appreciate about Kay Shea the most is just the preparation that she goes into it. Since I got here two and a half years ago, I mean, her growth has probably been the most. So it's no surprise to me. There's just a level of confidence in her in all facets of the position and certainly the way we play. So, um, you know, kudos to her. But uh, I think it's a reflection of how much she prepares. It really means a lot. It's something I have put in the work for, and obviously my team has supported me along the way. As much as it sounds like an individual accolade, it really is a team accomplishment. I couldn't have done it without every single person on this team, and I'm very proud to say that I am up there amongst some of the other people that have really done a great job for the program. No one deserves that more than her. I Obviously, she's a senior with, with myself, and um, literally growing up, through the last four years together, no one deserves it. She works hard, um, and I'm so glad that she got that tonight. The Friars got offensive production from their veteran leaders Sunday evening, with Rachel Uglick and Katherine Hiller accounting for all three of the Friars' goals. Yeah, I just think it's always good to see veterans, rising seniors, juniors, uh, playing really well because it, 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 it shows the growth they've had uh, within the program. Hiller obviously just, uh, I mean, just so driven, and her and Rachel are a handful. And right now they're in a good moment. They're, they're playing really well, scoring goals. But even when they're not scoring goals, they're, they're doing a good job creating for other opportunities as well. So just fantastic play by those two at the moment. I think it took everyone. Like there's girls stepping up that are getting on, and, and without them we cannot do it, do it all. We're old. <laughs> We feel it. No, but seriously, Hiller's awesome to play along with. She gets you through it. She will give her all until she literally can't anymore. It's great that we're finally vibing up top. Like, all the forwards are getting it. We're playing off each other, so it's a good feeling, especially going into Big East play. After two double overtime games against Georgetown a year ago, the Friars need no extra motivation to start Big East play on Sunday. We're really excited. It's just another great opportunity. Georgetown is a great team. You know, they're coming off a lot of great wins recently, but we're confident in our abilities to put the work in up until Sunday and then hopefully get the result we want. Well, we obviously put a demanding non-conference schedule together because we want to learn about the potential we can have as a group. I think we've demonstrated that. Uh, the Big East, every single team we play is going to be super competitive. Uh, we open up against Georgetown, who's picked to win it. They're playing really well. So we know we're going to have a super competitive match when we travel to D.C., but at the end of the day, uh, we're going to respect them and respect the opportunity to play, but we're going to go there and try to implement the way we want to play. And hopefully this week we can prepare and put ourselves in a position to make maybe just a couple more plays in them. The Friars have a week off before they take on Georgetown next Sunday at 1 p.m. That game can be viewed on the Big East Digital Network. From Chappie Field at Anderson Stadium, I'm Nick Rojas, Friars.com.